Hey gang, it's JC and this is your Daily Dose for Thursday, July the 1st, 2010. A cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. We have Dave Murray's weather forecasts for you here. You can subscribe to the audio of the Daily Dose on iTunes. We have archives at the top of the page. And I'm enjoying a 15-month paid vacation. And by the way, you know, all the sun and the rain and everything we've had has been great for the garden. We're growing tomatoes and two kinds of uh, eggplant and zucchini and all that. The thing is just going crazy. It looks like Vietnam back there. So we're very, very happy with the garden these days. Still nursing the hamstring issues. Seeing the doctor at 2.30 today. I'll have a full report on your desk in the morning. By the way, this is take two of today's Daily Dose. The first take, I had to stop because maggots fell out of this. <laughs> Uh, there were no maggots. But how about this airline story? It's just unbelievable. And on top of that, new stats from the Department of Transportation just make you want to get in your car and drive everywhere and never get on a plane again. The airlines made $256 million a month in the first three months of this year just on luggage fees alone. So for the first three months of the year, $769 million just on luggage fees. Now you throw in another $534 million of profit for the airlines for various services like pet fees. Then you add in another $554 million for changing reservations. Just drive. If I can get there inside of 10 hours, I drive. And by the way, this comes on the heels of a report earlier this week that says the food that you're eating on the airlines is unsanitary and they're finding rat feces and cockroaches and basically your ham sandwich that you pay like six dollars for on an airline now is being prepared for you in a 130 degree hangar at Lambert International Airport. It's unbelievable. All right, Clayton goes smoke free today. St. Louis City and County catch up with the rest of the 21st century on January 1st. Jeff Supon pitched yesterday, if you want to call it that, and this is giving Channel 5 sports director Rennie Knott a second opportunity to mispronounce his name. Uh, from 04 to 06, it was Jeff Supan and Jeff Supan, and he did it again yesterday. It's Supan, Jeff Supan, and this, by the way, from a guy whose first name is R-E-N-E, -E, and that would look like Rene, but he pronounces it Rennie and gets very upset when people mispronounce his name. You'd think he'd understand. All right, let's talk about uh, Diane Torian. Where do I start? This was somebody who was working at the Post-Dispatch, and somebody walked around the, the, the newsroom one day and said, you know what, we don't have anybody writing stories about radio. Um, you, you don't look busy. You're now our reporter on radio in, in, in St. Louis. And pretty much everything this woman wrote was summarily laughed at hilariously by members of the broadcast community. Well, she's married to a guy by the name of Bill Keege, and tonight you're going to see Bill Keege on Jimmy Kimmel. The reason he's going to be on Jimmy Kimmel is because he collects grocery lists. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. You landed a big one there, didn't you, Di? Meryl Streep in talks to play Margaret Thatcher. This will give her the opportunity to not even have to change accents from her last movie where she played Julia Child. Uh, generally, Judd Apatow movies uh, annoy me. I did like Anchorman, but most of the other stuff that he has done, I think, has been grossly overrated. I do like Pee Wee Herman, though, and now it turns out that, you know, I thought Pee Wee Herman's first movie was a masterpiece. Second one stunk. But uh, Judd Apatow and Pee Wee Herman have gotten together, and they're going to do a third Pee Wee Herman movie, Hey Hey. We got the 4th of July weekend coming up. I think it's the best of all holidays. We've talked about that here in the past. It's also Triple C's 35th birthday. Get in good with your wife. Mention her birthday early, but I think I just messed up by saying her age. Well, never mind. Anyhow, uh, the VP Fair is also this weekend. As if I needed more reasons not to go, I turned on the television this morning and Joe Mason apparently is on the entertainment committee. He was yapping away there this morning on TV. Now, I have not seen Joe Mason, nor have I had any contact with him in over a decade, and I'd like to keep it that way for another decade if possible. He was on television this morning not wearing a wedding ring. What a surprise. All right, the oldest postal worker in America is retiring at the age of 95. I'm pretty much sure that this was the guy that I got at the Clayton Post Office every time I went in the last 25 years. 
Larry King stepping down. Now, you've heard that his replacement might be Ryan Seacrest or Katie Couric or even Joy Behar. Put your money on the judge from America's Got Talent, Piers Morgan. Put your money on Piers Morgan as Larry King's replacement. And Larry King's retiring. After all, he died in 1986. Um, he has, however, been hired on as the new junior reporter on 60 Minutes. Uh, but they have to, you know, the makeup department is going to buy more embalming fluid if they're going to do that. But Larry retired from CNN to be able to spend more time with his, susp with his suspenders. <laughs> uh, and his glasses were getting too heavy. All right, um, yesterday I posted a picture, which you can still see right below, uh, on JC's Eye Candy of the Tea Party rally the other night, Tuesday at Bush Stadium. And there was a guy there that uh, misspelled a word on his poster. And I had a little fun with that, and that picture was put up for comedic purposes. Well, I got some varying objections to my treatment of that picture. One guy said, you're downplaying the importance of uh, the message and focusing on the spelling. You should be focusing on the message, not the spelling. And I think to myself, no, I think if you can't spell, you're an idiot. Um, and then I got this one. Now, this requires a little bit of background. Uh, at the old place, the old radio station, there were actually four radio stations in one building, one of which was a conservative Fox News affiliate, uh, and they ran Hannity and Savage and Laura Ingram and uh, Glenn Beck, and uh, they ran Bill O'Reilly. And one of my former co-workers emailed me, and he insisted that the photo I ran yesterday wasn't from the Tea Party rally the other night, and uh, sort of took me to task for being loose with the truth or perhaps making a factual error. And I found that hilarious, frankly, that someone who works for that kind of station um, would be getting up in my grill about factual errors because Bill O'Reilly, Glenn Beck, they never make any factual errors. And, of course, they never do it on purpose either. So just for fun, I went to a, a, a Google, um, what did I put it? Oh, Tea Party Signs. There's Google Tea Party Signs. And these were actual signs. So, okay, maybe, maybe the one I ran yesterday wasn't from the Tea Party the other night, but these all were. Um, one poster from the Tea Party said, if you can read this sign, you're smarter than Nancy Pelosi, your, Y-O-U-R. Obama, liar-in-chief, liar, L-I-E-R. -E no more illegal aliens, aliens with two L's. Dump the politicians, P-O-L-I-T-I-T-I-O-N-S, an extra tit in there. I am Joe the Plumber, Plumber, P-L-U-M-M-E-R. Control our border, B-O-A-R-D-E-R. -E I didn't serve 22 years for socialism, didn't, D-I-D apostrophe N-T. Make English America's official language, official, O-F-F-I-C-A-L, a fickle. Stop taking from hard-working people. Working. W-R-O-K-I-N-G. Respect our country. Our. A-R-E. Carpenters against new taxes. Tax is spelled T-A-X apostrophe S. Repeal Congress. R-E-P-E-E-L. Say no to socialism. Misspelled. And finally, thanks Fox News for keeping us informed. I N. F-R-O-M-E-D, in Frommed. Why don't you go down to Jeff's office and sit there and jerk off to Glenn Beck together, eh? Forget I ever worked there. Forget my email. Don't watch the Daily Dose to the guy from the old station who sent me that. All right. Now I'm in a really good mood. That is something. All right, JC's Video Village today. We're back to the Planet Hollywood Grand Opening back in 1998. JC's Wayback Machine, a KMOV news promo from 1998 that they actually did a real good job on. And JC's Eye Candy today is an x-ray of what your hand looks like after you blow it off with a firecracker. Happy 4th of July. Tomorrow, we'll get to that 10 things you should always buy used. I'm in a great mood now. All right, that's it. You're daily. Your daily dose for Thursday, July 1st, 2010, a cooperative venture with Bind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. And in the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye.